It's been 17 years since The X Factor had first hit our screens becoming must-see TV from the first episode. The ITV show, created by entertainment mogul, Simon Cowell, promised to make British superstars of its contestants and made good on that, for the most part. Many of its stars over the show 14-year run, the likes of Little Mix, One Direction, Leona Lewis, JLS, James Arthur and Ali Mers went on to forge big careers and become household names. But while they enjoyed long-term success, the singers from 2004's Series 1, became the show's casualties, seemingly, falling by the music industry wayside. We take a look at how Series 1 finalists, including winner Steve Brookstein, went from being overnight sensations, rooted on by millions of avid viewers to failed recording artists who had to return to their day jobs. Steve Brookstein the first ever winner of The X Factor auditioned in front of Louis Walsh, Sharon Osbourne and, show boss, Simon Cowell. He was first greeted by TV presenter, Kate Thornton, who hosted the very first series up until Series 3 when Dermot O'Leary took over. The middle-aged pub singer was a divisive contestant. Loved by many for his seemingly humble persona and renditions of old-school soul classics, but not beloved by critics and the outspoken Sharon Osbourne who considered him smarmy and mediocre. Six million votes were cast for Steve, who was eventually crowned the show's winner, a record he held for five years until Joe McElderry slightly edged the record in 2009. Steve was automatically signed to the Sony BMG record label as part of his winnings and released his first single, a cover of Phil Collins' 1984 track Against All Odds, which bagged him number one in January 2005. His debut album followed months later, but despite hitting the number one spot in May 2005, the label dropped him weeks later. He released an album, called Forgotten Man, in 2014, and released an autobiography, Getting Over the X, the same year. Both projects bombed. A few years after, he faced a humiliating turn when he was pictured at a pub gig, which failed to sell out, performing covers to a handful of people who appeared disinterested. In 2018 he returned to music with his soul band, The Turrells, a group made up of session musicians. Over the years he has been vocal in his criticism of The X Factor, and has spoke out about his bitterness about his experience with the show. These days, Steve regularly butts heads with Twitter users for his controversial views online. Gone is the self-deprecating shy persona. His comments are also routinely flagged and removed from Twitter. G4 known for their operatic take on pop songs, G4 narrowly missed out on winning The X Factor in 2004. Despite being runners-up, members, Jonathan Ansel, Matthew Stiff, Mike Christie and Ben Tapa were still offered a music deal by Sony after the show. They released a self-titled debut album in February 2005 and topped the UK charts. Their second album, G4 and Friends, hit the charts at number 6. It was in 2007. After the release of their third album, that the group announced on GMTV that they would be splitting due to internal rows. However, they reunited in 2014, but without Matthew who was replaced by Nick Ashby. While they've not managed to replicate the success of their early days, they remain together doing small gigs and releasing albums, including a live Christmas album last year. The pandemic forced the postponement of their 2020 Christmas tour until this year. However, they kept fans entertained with a series of online shows during lockdown.
Abby Callahan Irish musician Tabby finished in third place but went on to star in what Tabby did next which was shown ITV as he released his first single in Ireland. These days, Tabby who describes himself on Twitter as a guitarist and singer, family man and follower of Christ. Not in a Ned Flanders way, continues to make music and perform in his hometown Sligo. The 40-year-old is very active on social media where he interacts with loyal fans. Roetta Satchel the Manchester-born singer, who is best known for her work with the Happy Mondays, finished fourth as the last woman standing. She has stayed in the limelight, and firmly on the Manchester music scene, since then by putting out albums, TV appearances and bagging theatre roles. Roetta joined the Happy Mondays in 2015 when they toured again for the 25th anniversary of the album Pills and Drills and Belly Aches. Roetta recently tweeted about getting to work in the studio in preparation for the Return to Live shows. Cassie Compton at just 17, Cassie wowed judges on the show. After she left the show in fifth place, she returned to being an actress. She's since starred in Casualty, Mr. Selfridge and as Francine Spencer in BBC One's Call the Midwife. She also went on to star in West End productions of Les Miserables and Wicked, as well as American Psycho at the Almeida and the UK tour of The Wedding Singer. The 34-year-old recently shared a throwback photo on Instagram of herself with the Osborne family, including Sharon and Ozzy, writing, My iPhoto memories remembers this moment more than I do. What an introduction to this industry. 17 years later this photo is the F King bomb. Peas, thanks at Jack Osborne for holding my shaking hand that evening I would have fallen over. My love to you all. Voices with Soul The Luton-based family group consisting of members Grace, Hildia, and Corrine Campbell, were famously let go by their mentor Louis Walsh after they ended up in the bottom two with G4 in week four. They continued to perform together and during the pandemic, hosted a series of Facebook live shows, hanging with Voices with Soul. The trio also recently took part in a YouTube fundraiser for Volcano Hit St. Vincent. Two to-go duo Peter Jones and Emma Payne were chopped by mentor Louis Walsh in week three after a sing-off Voices with Soul. They joined the National Arena X Factor Tour in 2005. The pair continued on doing small gigs around the country before Peter went solo and Emma went out of the spotlight. He released his first album, Look At Me Now, in 2010 and, in 2013, released another under the name Tiger Moth Tales. Has since put out a further three albums. Verity Keys Verity was in the over 25s category mentored by Simon and was eliminated from the ITV competition in the second week in eighth place after losing the sing off to two to go. Prior to the X Factor, Verity had worked with musicians including Tommy Cooper, Tony Christie, and Matt Monroe and signed her first recording contract with Ami Records at 20. Verity now runs her own singing teaching practice from her home near Grimsby. Roberta Howard Roberta was the first to be eliminated from the live shows. Six years after her appearance, she released her debut single, Beautiful Lies, in Ireland. It became the Irish star's first top 40 single, debuting at number 23 in the Irish singles chart. Roberta has since worked as a backing vocalist with Boys Life, the band featuring Brian McFadden and Keith Duffy and has also sung for well-known acts, including Billy Ocean, K.T. Tunstall, and Ronan Keating. The 39-year-old, 
who has also done live performances as a backing vocalist at Oxygen and Glastonbury festivals, still writes and releases her own music independently.